Dear students, welcome to the problem solving session on applications of Cauchy residue theorem to evaluate real integrals, part 3. The first video, we saw all the basics which is necessary to evaluate the real integrals. We had a five stepped procedure. First one is preliminaries followed by the diagram. And step two is substitution. And step three, we found the poles. Step four, we find the residues for the poles lies inside C. And finally, we apply Cauchy residue theorem. From this, we achieve our solution for the problem integral over 0 to 2 pi f of sin theta comma cos theta d theta. In the part 2 video, we solved a problem which involves cos theta. And in today's session, we are going to solve a problem which involves sin theta. As usual, make the table and write all the preliminaries. Z equal to e power i theta, then 1 by z is e power minus i theta. Then by Euler's identity, we have e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. Therefore, we get z equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. Obviously, 1 by z is cos theta minus i sin theta. Adding these two equations and simplifying, we get cos theta is z square plus 1 by 2z. And subtracting these two equations, we get sin theta equal to z square minus 1 by 2i z. This is what we are going to substitute in the question. And for d theta, we have dz divided by i z. And the region is mod z equal to 1. This is nothing but a circle with center 0, 0 and radius 1. So after writing the preliminaries, immediately draw the circle because we are expert. Draw the circle with radius 1, center 0, 0 and mark few points where it is passes through the axis. That is more than enough. Step 2, substitution. So let us assume capital I is my question. Now from the preliminaries, substitute sin theta, d theta and convert the integral 0 to 2 pi to integral over C. Substituting, we get integral over C 1 by 13 plus 5 z square minus 1 by 2i z because we have sin theta into d z by i z. Simplifying this, we get 1 divided by i z 13 plus 5 z square minus 1 divided by 2i z d z. Now taking LCM, we have integral over C 1 by i z 26 i z plus 5 z square minus 1 divided by 2 i z. So I can cancel this i z with the denominator. Now we have 2 that is 1 divided by 1 by 2. So I can take this to the numerator. You can see the typed version. Now we can take this 2 to the numerator. And since 2 is the constant, I can take this out. Therefore, capital I is 2 times integral over C, dz divided by 5z square plus 26iz minus 5. I am just simplifying this. Now, consider this as my f of z. Therefore, my capital I is 2 times integral over c f of z into dz. Take this as equation 1. We have to find capital I. Here f of z is 1 by 5z square plus 26iz minus 5. Next step 3, we have to find the poles. To find the poles, make the denominator 0. Now use z equal to minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Finding a, b and c and substituting in the formula, we get this minus 26i plus or minus square root of 26 i square is minus 676 minus into minus plus 100 divided by 10. So we have minus 26i plus or minus square root of minus 576 divided by 10. Simplifying this using your calculator, we can find root of 576 is 24 root of minus 1 is i divided by 10. Now we have to simplify this minus 26i minus 24i by 10 and 
minus 26i plus 24i by 10. So we get minus 50i by 10, comma, minus 2i by 10. Therefore, the poles are minus 5i and minus i by 5. I said one trick. Don't bother about the i. Don't bother about the negative symbol. My answer is minus i by 5 and minus 5i. My region is mod z equal to 1. Just ignore the i and minus. Now, weaving this number as 1 by 5 and 5. Then we can easily see 1 by 5 less than 1 and 5 is greater than 1. Therefore, this point minus 5i lies outside C and the point minus i by 5 lies inside C. So, z equal to minus 5i is a simple pole lies outside C and minus i by 5 is a simple pole lies inside C. We can write this provided you have to draw the diagram. Diagram is very, very important. You have to draw, then only we can justify this. Next, as I said in the previous video also, whenever there is a z square plus b z plus c equal to 0, when we simplify this or when we factorize this, it is very important if we have to multiply this a with the roots. Suppose you are finding the roots are some minus alpha and minus beta. You can write this as z plus alpha and z plus beta. If a equal to 1, we can just write directly. We have added like z square plus a y z equal to 6. One. We can factorize this as z plus 2 into z plus 3 because here the coefficient is 1. So we are not mentioning it. But in this problem, we have 5 z square plus 26 i z minus 5. So I have to multiply 5 and we have to write the factorized data that is z plus 5 i into z plus i by 5. If you don't multiply this 5, you lead to a big mistake in the final solution. So why I do like this? Suppose if you take this 5 outside, z square plus 26 i by 5 is at minus 1. If you factorize this, this is also okay, but this term involves like 26 i by 5. It will be little tougher for you to do this minus b plus r minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a formula. For this, I just take the problem as it is. At the end, I am multiplying the coefficient of z square. That is a here, a is 5. Hope you understand student. So this is very important. That's why I am saying this repeatedly. Next, step 4. So we have two simple poles, minus i by 5 and minus 5i. We found that minus i by 5 lies inside and minus 5i lies outside. So we have to find the residue. We know the formula for simple pole. R of A is equal to limit z tends to A, z minus A into f of z. Therefore, R of minus i by 5 is limit z tends to minus i by 5, z minus half minus i by 5 into f of z. So minus into minus plus, this will become z plus i by 5. And we know f of z and we find the simplification also. So we can write this as limit z tends to minus i by 5, z plus i by 5, f of z, I said 5 into z plus i by 5 into z plus 5i. Now I can cancel this 2 and then substituting the value of z, that is minus i by 5. So 1 divided by 5 times minus i by 5 plus 5i. Now simplifying this, we get 5 into minus i plus 25i divided by 5. So I can cancel this 5, therefore r of minus i by 5 is simply 1 by 24i. Next we have to apply Cauchy residue theorem, that is my step 5, integral over c f of z dz is equal to 2 pi i into sum of residues. Here we have only one residue minus i by 5. So 2 pi i into 1 by 24 
i so pi i get cancel and i can simplify this to we get pi by 12 and very important as i said earlier this is not my destination just we found integral over c f of z d z that is pi by 12 now we have to find the solution for equation 1 my equation 1 is capital i is equal to 2 times integral over c f of z d z so 2 times pi by 12 just now we found the solution therefore my final destination is pi by therefore my solution is pi by 6 so integral over 0 to 2 pi d theta divided by 13 plus 5 sin theta is equal to pi by 6 hope you understand students finally we end up the session with practice problems you can just practice this problems now there comes a question i have given only the question not the solution the reason is we have a general formula for a greater than modulus of b the following results holds integral over 0 to 2 pi d theta in the denominator either a plus b sin theta or a plus b cos theta the answer is going to be 2 pi divided by square root of a square minus b square this will be holding only if a greater than mod b because suppose you are getting a problem like this pi plus 6 cos theta or d theta divided by 5 minus 6 cos theta then this result will not hold the reason is in the first one a greater than mod b it is violating because 5 is less than 6 similarly here 5 is greater than minus 6 but our condition is a greater than mod b so modulus of b is 6 and a is 5 so this is not true so you should be very careful this result holds only if you have a greater than mod b and one more important thing you can just remember this formula but you should not write the answer directly when you get the question you have to solve by the procedure for verification purpose you can remember this because you may do some typos errors minus plus issues in your exams then you can remember the formula if you don't get the correct answer go and check where you did the error rectify it now coming back to the practice problems we have the solution 2 pi divided by square root of a square minus b square here a is 5 and mod b is 3 so 5 greater than 3 the results hold so 2 pi divided by square root of 5 square that is 20 pi minus 9 it is going to be root 16 so we write this as 4 so pi by 2 is my answer for this problem also 10 is greater than mod 6 it is 6 so the solution is 2 pi divided by 100 minus 36 so we get 64 square root of 64 is 8 my answer is pi by 4 and you should not mislead that my denominator is always a natural number it may be a real number see this problem 2 pi 5 is greater than modulus of minus 2 so when you do this 25 minus 4 we get square root of 21 so the solution is 2 pi by square root of 21 similarly for this problem we have square root of 2 square that is 4 minus 1 square root of pi by 3 So now you get the solution and very important thing all this problem my a is greater than mod b because of this condition i am using this result hope you understand students Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.